Hi everyone, this video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 2.2.13 Point-to-Point Single Area OSPF Version 2 Configuration. This Packet Tracer Assignment is part of the CCNA Version 7 Enterprise Networking Security and Automation Cisco Networking Academy Curriculum. So in this lab, we've got three routers set up and we want to set up OSPF version two. OSPF version two basically allows us to um, set up and configure IP version four networks. OSPF version three actually sets up and configures IP version six networks in case you were wondering. So some of the things we have to do and take notice of, and I'm gonna use Notepad to do this really quickly, is kind of take inventory of what advertisements we need to make. So R1, R2, and R3 are all going to be participating in um, basically in OSPF advertisement. So R1 wants to advertise to R2 every network that's directly connected to it, even if it shares it with R2. So we want R1 to say, hey, I know about three networks because I've got three networks directly plugged in. Remember, a router divides uh, a network into separate little subnets or individual networks. So they can't communicate with each other unless the router's involved. Routers also, remember, only know about what's directly connected to them without involving a dynamic routing protocol. So we're going to involve a dynamic routing protocol called OSPF, and we want to do this, this for every single one of these. So one of the things we want to do is take inventory. So R1, what networks do you know about? I know about 192.168.10.0. Remember, we also want to use network statements, not individual assigned IP addresses to devices. We want to use the whole network advertisement. So 192.168.10.0, they've done a nice job of laying that out for us here. Okay, that describes all the devices between here. And the subnet mask for that is a slash 24 or slash 24 is 255.255.255.0. OK, so the next thing we've got is and I'll put an or here. All right, one nine or sorry, 10.1.1.0 and that is a slash 30 or. All right. What is a slash 30? That is a 255.255.255.252. OK, so that is kind of like one of the smallest subnets that we can have. And I just never memorized these from using them so much. Or you can use a subnet and calculator there. The other one is 10.1.1.4 or slash 30. 255.255.255.252. All right. Then with R2 here, we've got 192.168.20.0 which is also a slash 24 or 255.255.255.0. We've got 10.1.1.0, which is a slash 30. And we've got 10.1.1.8. Okay, which is also a slash 30. And this will help you out in a minute, I promise you. I know it seems like a lot of setup, but it's gonna help you out. 30.0. And these are just all the networks that are directly plugged in. So this is a slash 24 or that one. We've also got uh, 10.1.1.4 there or slash 30. Then we've got 10.1.1.8 also directly plugged in there, dot 252. OK, so those are all of our and I'll put I'll take out these slash notations just to I don't want to confuse anybody, but this is kind of how it's laid out in the network. So we got to be able to convert them from the slash notation. As you see it there, a slash 24 is really this. OK. All right. Um, some other things here you'll notice. Some other things here you'll notice is that we need what's called a wildcard mask. So before we even get started, what in the world is a wildcard mask? So to figure out what a wildcard mask is, let's say that our first advertisement here is a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, OK? And I'll put this is my subnet mask, all right? So how in the world am I going to find out what this wildcard mask is. So to figure that out, what I do is 
you take the number 255 and put it above each one of your numbers and you are going to subtract. So we're going to do 255, 255, 255, 25, and we're going to just subtract each one of these numbers. So what do you get when you do that? You end up getting 0, because 255 minus 255 is 0, 0, 0, 255, because 255 minus 0 is 255. So your wildcard mask is that number. Okay, so a 0, dot zero dot zero dot two fifty five okay so for our wildcard mask here we actually are going to put zero dot zero dot zero dot two five five because we need it for our advertisement here it would be zero dot zero dot zero dot three because again two five five minus two fifty two is dot three that time our wildcard mask for this one is zero dot zero dot zero dot three Make sense? So that is what we actually need when we put in our network advertisements. All right, that'll be important in a moment. Okay, so let's start with the basics here. We're going to go to R1, and it wants me to set these R1, R2, and R3, and set these router advertisements. They're, uh, sorry, the router IDs. So let me zoom in here. So for this we need to set a router and then a process ID of 10. So we do router OSPF and then use 10. Okay. Then we are going to set the router ID for R1 as router dash ID. Remember, you can use your tab key like that. That will actually identify R1 to all the other routers as like, what is your name? You are 1.1.1.1. Doesn't have anything to do with connectivity. Okay, so again, router ID and then that IP address there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that to all three of them. So let's go to R2, enable config T, router OSPF 10, and then router dash ID 2.2.2.2. All right, and I'm going to leave it right here because we're going to come back in a second. And we need to be under the router OSPF configurations. To do our next thing, enable config T router dash ID 3.3.3.3. Whoops, forgot a whole command. Router OSPF 10, then router dash ID 3.3.3.3. There we go. Now we got those entered in there. I'm going to go back to R1. And it wants us to do our network advertisements. Again, um, making sure we advertise the network correctly. OK, so we're going to do network and then we're going to do the network address, our wildcard mask, which we figured out. And then we're going to do area and the area ID. Everything will be single area here. We have not got to multi area where you can have it where routers don't know about other areas. Everything's going to be in the same area here. All right. And it wants us to use usually area zero um, for that. So there's really no need to do any type of other area, most likely. Um, you'll learn in multi-area that area zero is usually the backbone, but again, um, it's just an area ID number. We're going to use them all the same. Okay. And let's make sure it wants us to, sometimes they have you configure it crazy ways, um, for all the attached networks. All right. So again, this is where we can bring our list back out here. Or you can look at the router itself. So we have three networks, 192.168.10.0, and that, so that wildcard mask of 0 .0 0.0.0.255. So let me actually um, make it a little smaller, bring it up here. All right, that's better. So now we need network 192.168.10.0. Again, if you didn't know what came next, you can do a question mark, and it's asking for that wildcard, 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.255. All right, next, what do I do? Area. What next? Actual area. Okay, so we put area 0, we hit enter. The next one we've got is the next network of 
1.1.1.1, but we're going to use this wildcard mask at 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.3. It's going to be in the same area though. So network 10.1.1.0. And again, this is the network that's directly plugged into R1. That's the network between R1 and R2. Then lastly, we're going to do the network that's plugged into R1 that it shares with R3, which is the dot four network. 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.3 area zero all right and hit enter there okay now when it goes to r2 they have you do something a little different okay on router 2 configure ospf using network commands with the ip addresses of the interfaces and quad zero mass the syntax of the network command is the same as was used above all right so i actually want you to do pretty much the same thing um all right so let's go ahead and do that so we've got three here. So we've got 192.168.20.0.0.0.255, area zero, network 10.1.1.0, which it shares with router one, and then 10. And you see that will come up there, right? You can just press enter if it catches you in the middle of your command. That means it is formed an adjacency with neighboring router 1.1.1.1 because I typed in that network that it shares. So it's like, hey, we know about the same network. So now we can communicate. Um, so then we're going to do the 10.1.1.8 that it shares with R3. So network 10.1.1.8. 0 .0 0.0.0.3 because that's the wildcard mask area zero okay so that's this three advertisements then we're going to go over to r3 so on r3 when we go back here after we have done the routing updates it wants us to do it a little bit different than we did for router one and router two so here we're going to go to each interface and advertise it so instead of advertising the entire network we're going to do interface and we need to see which interfaces we got here so to advertise this network we've got g000 so we do interface g000 and we are going to do ip ospf the area id is 10 all right and then area zero because that's the area we wanted to be a part of okay then exit out of that then what network does it share with R1? So serial 011, it shares here, connects that network. So we're going to go into serial 011. So interface serial 011. And we're going to do IP OSPF 10 area 0. Okay. Then we exit out and we go into interface S00. Come on. S010. S010, and we do IP OSPF 10 area 0. And what that does is it will advertise those statements out for our router. So when we look at it, we do show run, sorry, do show run because we're here. All right, we'll see under each one of these advertise that area. All right, so that's how we can do it for that instead of our traditional network command. So there's two different ways you can see there to advertise the networks. Now it wants us to set a passive interface on our on all of them. So what that does is, all right, you don't you want routing advertisements sent out between the routers. You do not want routing advertisements sent out to the local area networks because it doesn't know what to do with that. So right here, G000 on R2, G000 on R1, and G000 on R3 all need to be set to passive so they don't get routing updates. They'll just take up bandwidth. So right here we do passive-int G000. Hit enter. Then on R2, same thing because it was the same. You want to check the port, but it is the same. Passive int g000. 
And then over here, passive-int g000 and hit enter. 